Hi and welcome to this Genius Cycle Higher Level Maths Revision video. In this video, we're going to revise inequalities. So inequalities are very similar to equations, but instead of our equal sign, we're going to instead see our inequality signs. These are less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to. So when we solve an inequality, we're going to get a range of values rather than simply one value like we do with equations. You're required to know two types of inequalities, linear inequalities and compound inequalities. You'll only be required to solve linear inequalities. So as we discussed, an inequality is like an equation, but instead of an equal sign, it has one of those inequality signs. Sometimes students struggle to remember the difference between them um, and can sometimes get which side is bigger, but often lose sight of what that symbol means. So one way to remember it is that less than, it kind of looks like an L that's been tilted. The reason that I'm stressing that an inequality is like an equation is that in the majority of cases we're going to treat this inequality like an equation. There is only one time where the inequality does not act like an equation and we can learn a very simple rule to get beyond that step. Before we start looking at some examples, let's go and do a very quick revision of our numbers. So if we want to do an inequality question, the three types of numbers that we see are natural numbers, which are denoted by an N, integers, which are denoted by a Z, and the real numbers, which are denoted by an OR. Just to remind you, natural numbers are positive whole numbers. And um, when we are graphing these on the number line, they appear as dots because we only want to include those particular whole numbers. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. When we graph them on the inequality line, um, sorry, when we graph an inequality on the number line that are integers, again, like the natural numbers, we use dots because we only want those whole numbers to be included. When we deal with real numbers, we are dealing with all the numbers that are on the number line. When we show the real numbers on the number line in a solution, we use a solid line. So we can see here our number line, it has a red line going over it. It's important to remember that when we deal with real numbers, there's a slight difference to how we work at the end. If it's a less than symbol or a greater than symbol, we plot an open circle like this to tell the person who's reading our graph that all the values up to that point are included, but the value itself is not included. Then if we have a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to, because that number is also included, we use a closed circle or a dot. So it's important to remember that these two symbols will only appear if we're dealing with real numbers. Real numbers on the graph, graph or on the number line are graphed completely differently to our other two types of numbers and it is important that you remember to include this open circle when we have no equal to sign and the closed circle when we do. Example one, find and plot the solution of 2x plus 7 is less than or equal to 11, where x is an element of or. So there's quite a bit going on in this question. What I always suggest is boxing or highlighting um, the actual inequality itself. The second part, x an element of or, is giving us an instruction on how we plot it. So remember, when we're talking about real numbers, we're talking about all of the numbers on the number line, we're doing so many dots that they effectively look to the eye as if it's a straight line. We're not going to worry about that piece until the end. So the first thing we're going to do is solve this inequality. Remember, the inequality acts like it equals in every case except one. And we'll see that in our next example. So if this was an equation, we would take away seven from both sides. So our vertical balancing, you don't have to show it vertically. You can do it using a shortcut or show it horizontally. It's absolutely perfect. We have two X is now, even though it acts like an equation, it is not an equation. It is an inequality. So don't mix up your signs here. That sign carries down and that is four. 
Our final step then is to divide both sides by 2. So x is less than or equal to 2. So on our number line, we look again at the fact that this is a real number. So it's going to include 2. So I put a dot on 2 like this. And you can do it above the number line. That's absolutely perfect. And x is less than or equal to 2. Now, it's moving to the left like this. And our inequality sign, if you have your x or whatever variable it is on the left, the inequality sign acts like an arrow pointing you in the right direction. So there is my less than and I'm going to fill in the arrow to show that it's continuing on to negative infinity. Okay. So then what happens if we have a little bit more complex of a linear inequality? So again, I'm going to box the inequality itself so we don't get confused. Remember, x and element of or is simply telling us how we will plot. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my letters on the left, numbers on the right. I'm going to work from the left, which means I'm going to take away a 5 from both sides, just like I would if it was an equation. And I have 2x is less than 3x minus 7. Now I want to get rid of this 3x. I'm going to take away a 3x from both sides. And that leaves me with minus x or minus 1x if you prefer is less than minus 7. Now, this is where the inequality doesn't act like an equation. If we have a negative in front of our variable, what I always suggest to students to do is to change the signs. Okay, so I wouldn't do any division at this point. The reason is, and, and I know some people learn about the division. I find that students will do a change all the time when you're dividing. So it just, for ease, when there is a minus in front of the variable, in this case, the x, we're going to change the signs. But when we change the signs, so the x will become a positive x. So positive x, the negative 7 becomes a positive 7. But when we change those signs, we also need to change the inequality sign. So the inequality sign also changes. It flips. So this was a less than, so it becomes a greater than sign. So my final answer is x is greater than 7. So that's a really important little step to note. So because we're dealing with real numbers, we're not including 7. We don't start at the next number because we're dealing with real numbers, which means um, if we're going bigger than 7, 7.000001 is included. So it wouldn't be correct to go straight to 8. So how we show this, open circle on 7. Remember, when the variable is on the left, the inequality sign acts like an arrow, so we're moving to the right because it's greater than 7. We're filling in all of these, okay? And when we put all those dots together, what they look like is that straight line, and that's our solution plotted. Just to explain that last example a little bit more and the method that we're using there for changing the sign, I want to explain with numbers so we can clearly see how the inequalities act like equations in all ways except one. So I started with this inequality that 2 is less than 3 and hopefully everyone can agree that 2 is smaller than less than 3. So now let's add a 3 to both sides because remember we want to keep this balance, so it acts like an equation, so we would add a 3 to both sides, and let's see if that is still valid. So then we have 5 is less than 6, and is that true? Yeah, it is. So what about subtracting 2? Now, I'm going to literally work off the inequality just above it. So I'm doing 5 take away 2 is 3 is less than 4. Is 3 less than 4? Yeah, it is. That's perfect. Okay. What about multiplying? Will this still be true when we multiply? So multiply by 4. 3 4s are 12. 4 4s are 16. Is 12 less than 16? Yeah, it is. Perfect. 
Let's talk about division then. So 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Is 6 less than 8? And the answer is yes. So it looks like an inequality pretty much acts like an equation. So what is that one exception? So look at a change of sign. So if we have an equation and we have minus x equals minus 3, I always suggest that you change both signs, which you can do as long as you do it to both sides, you can change it. And you have an x equals 3 because I find students dividing by a negative coefficient, things go wrong. They drop the negative, they forget the negative, lots of things go wrong. So one way to try and limit mistakes is by changing the sign. So minus x equals minus 3 is the same as x equals 3. Can we do the same thing if we have an inequality? So if I change both signs, is minus 6 less than minus 8? Now, negative numbers can be a pain as well. So think of this as temperature. 6 is colder than 8. So 6 degrees temperature, 8 degrees, 6 is colder. Is minus 6 colder than minus 8? So remember, at 0, the numbers kind of go backwards. So actually, minus 8 is smaller than minus 6. So this is not correct. How we could make it correct, so this is wrong. So how we could make it correct is if we change the signs, but then also flip that inequality sign, because minus six is actually bigger than minus eight. So the little note that I always get students to write is change the signs and we change the inequality. Now, any change in sign will cause this to happen. So if you've learned something like when you multiply by a negative number, when you divide by a negative number, yeah, that is all true. Whenever there is a change of sign due to multiplication or division, or simply like me here, changing both sides, which is actually multiplying or dividing by a minus one, that's effectively what we really are doing. Um, but when this happens, you'll always have to flip that inequality sign. The reason I prefer this method over talking division and multiplication is because students will then get confused, vaguely remember there's something about multiplication and always change the signs when there's multiplication or division. And that's incorrect. So this is a nice little method that, again, will limit mistakes. Example three, compound inequalities. So the old junior start course had us solving compound inequalities. And I'm only saying that because if you're looking at any older questions or older videos, you might think, oh, I've never seen these compound inequalities before. So the new junior cycle course, we still need to be able to represent them and graph them, but we don't need to solve them. So let's look at an example. A new toll road is built and C represents the number of cars entering the city per hour. Write an inequality for C if the number of cars known to be between, sorry, if the number of cars is known to be between 350 and 500 during peak hours. So how we write this is we write the smaller number first, so our 350, and then we have our bigger number, 500, and C is between them. So this is without the inequality signs. To then put in the inequality signs, I find it's easier to work with the bigger number because C is going to be smaller than, okay? It doesn't say you're equal to, mm, I would probably include the 500 in an exam question, it'll be very clear. And then C will also be bigger than 350. So because of the way it's written, it's actually 350 is smaller than C. So C is between 350 and 500. If you write it as smaller C and then the bigger number, those two inequality signs will always be less than or equal to, and they will always point the same direction. So if they're going different directions, you know something has gone wrong. Now, show this inequality on a number line. So because we're talking cars, C would have to be a natural number. 
Okay, so real numbers, they can be decimals and fractions, so can't have half a car. Um, Z, integers would mean there could be negative numbers, can't have a negative number of cars. So we're talking natural numbers. So we would dot all the relevant numbers. Now, showing that in an inequality line, ooh, it's going to be quite difficult because you want to dot all the numbers between 350 and 500. Um, which is quite a lot of numbers, but I'm going to show you roughly what we could do. So I'm going to go up just in 50s. So 200, um, there's 300, 400, 500. Each dash represents 50. I'd include 350. I'm going to include 400, 450 and 500. In between all of those, we would also be dotting every whole positive number in between. So dot each positive whole number in between. Positive, because we're on the positive side. Whole, because we're not including any fractions or decimals. Numbers between. Now, again, this is not an exam question. So it'll give you a sense of what we could do, but it's not very well asked. In an exam, we'd expect it to be a much better asked question.